Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2020 Mayakoba Golf Classic DraftKings Picks and Preview and Bets, the final event of the 2020 calendar year on the PGA Tour. Time to get over to DraftKings, make a deposit, play triple what you normally do. It's a great event. If you're looking for the correlation course, you're going to hear me say it. It is the Sony Open and other like coastal shorter courses. If you have not become a member at FantasyNational.com as of right now, I don't know what you're doing, but there's one week left. If you're going to play more than 10 bucks on DraftKings or bet more than 10 bucks. highly suggest getting the weekly at FantasyNational.com. FantasyNational.com slash Mayo gets you the discount. It'll make it 8 bucks for the week. If you want stats, you want tools, you want the simulator, you want DraftKings ownership projections. I mean, we don't actually have the ownership. They're projections based on what the users are doing in the system. Then... You know, you got to become a member right now, fantasynational.com. If you're looking for the cheat sheet, that'll be out Wednesday afternoon on DraftKingsPlaybook.com. And you can check out my Pivots article up on FTNDaily.com on Wednesday afternoon as well. I also have a huge golf announcement coming, so stay tuned to the Christmas content where we do the draft and all that fun stuff for that huge announcement. Maybe involved, maybe not, though, is Ben Raza from Awesomeo.com. What's up? Not much. We've made it. The final event of 2020 i did not miss a single tournament all year no wait maybe that's a lie did i do bermuda maybe i didn't do bermuda no i did bermuda there's one i took uh, off yeah. one swing I, season i took off i was yeah i think i'm pretty close to uh i don't know if i took any events off maybe like corrales i definitely played bermuda sadly i remember that all too well it was close. It, was, it was corrales yeah that may have been a bye week for me as well Man, it was a bye week for a lot of people. Bermuda was a disaster. Awful. Pat Perez left the tournament. That summed it up nicely. Yeah, made the cut, left the tournament, and he hasn't made a cut since. So congratulations, Pat. I know maybe he made it last week. I can't even remember at this point. All the golf just blends together so much this time of year with football going on. Like, I, I can't isolate. Like, I know Streb won the RSM. You beat Kisner in the playoff. You're poor Kisner. That's who you bet to win. I know. Oh, I, that's the only thing I took away from that. I wasn't even really paying attention. I just saw him up there. Had an outright ticket. Uh, it's just crazy. Now, I was telling you before the show, college basketball started. It's it's a little overload. Luckily, we get a little hiatus here. I think it's it's due for a bit of a hiatus. There's that, like, father-son brothers tournament that's coming up where Justin Thomas and his dad are the betting favorites. Have you looked at that at all? Uh, no. That's the one with Tiger and his kid? Yeah. So the, there were odds released on it. Nowhere where I can bet it yet. But John Daly is playing with his son, and his son is good. I will have to, yeah, that's that, what is it, like the Q, Q something? The well, you, no, I think the QBC oh. shootout is something different. I think this is just like okay. a brand, I don't know if it's a brand new event. So there's two, there, I saw that the dailies were like 29 to 1 or something like that. And then like Tom Lehman and his son, the guy who's good on the Outlaw Tour, are like 18 to 1. Those seem like by far the most logical picks. Like I have no idea how good Justin Thomas's dad is at golf. I'm sure he's fine. Maybe Justin Thomas can just carry the day because he's so good. But not knowing the rules of the event. I, I think that's where I would go, those two teams. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even know these teams existed, so uh, I'm going to probably tell you on that. If if I decide to, to wager on something I didn't know existed, so I'm excited about that. When is this? Next week? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Okay. Sometime knows? in the next month. Beautiful. Did you bet on the match? Because I certainly did, and I won a bunch of money. I also bet the match. I just, uh, nothing crazy. I just bet the pro because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a little confused about that in general. Not that I thought Barkley would be good, but I wasn't surprised to see him do what he did. And then obviously Phil doing Phil things. Well, I think that guys like Curry and even Romo get overrated because they they're good enough like to play at the very bottom end. Maybe not of the tour, but like you know, they would be a guy who misses the cut on the Corn Ferry Tour type of skill level. Unless they played like every single day, which they don't. Um, that when you like look at the handicaps, like, oh, Phil's a, you know, four shots better than Steph Curry. It's like, yeah, maybe at their best, like maybe at Curry's best versus average Phil. But if Phil just goes out and plays like he normally does and Curry has like a slightly bad round, they're going to kill them. And that's what happened. Yeah. I think a lot of that stuff comes down, especially with golf. It's not about the ceiling. It's about the median outcome. Like Curry's best, Romo's best is probably like corn fairy level quality but they can't do it consistently. Whereas even a guy like Phil, 
he's going to be able to carry a team like that. So it was entertaining. It was good. I, I didn't see too much of it, to be honest, but I was glad. I was betting all sorts of things. Then my Mike Tyson bet, that was a stupid draw, but what can you do? When how, somebody... how did that end up being a draw? I don't understand I don't that. It's fixed, no, right? That, yeah, definitely. So we can get round two? It's all about the all about the dollars. Yeah, I it was not a draw, obviously. Did you bet on Jake Paul? No, I didn't bet that fight. Should have, obviously, given what we saw, but I did not bet it. Is I, I don't quite I mean I understand boxing, but I really can't tell like who's who's good and who's bad. Is it because Jake Paul's actually good or he was just huge over Nate Robinson, like weight wise, height wise, and Nate Robinson didn't seem to know what he was doing? Yeah, I think it's the latter, but I I, pff, I obviously have no idea. Because it seems like Jake Paul at least has an idea of what he's doing. I mean, it, it looked like, well, it looked more like he knew what he was doing over at Nate Robinson, who obviously didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, this is true. Let's jump into this. Do you got anything really to say about the course except that it's on a resort, which I've been to? Very nice resort. If you, go, if you go just, it's like 45 minutes south of Cancun. I was there, fuck, before I had kids, so... Uh, a time I don't even remember at this point. Uh, I think it's where, where we actually conceived the baby. But the course is quite nice. There's, like, no rough. It, it's basically like Wai Lai is the easiest way to do it. It's, like, easier Wai Lai. Yeah. I, listen, they've played this course a lot. The Chameleon, whatever it's called. El Chameleon. Um, yeah, there you go. No, it's a short coastal. Nothing too surprising. The good thing I like, I think we know uh, what kind of players. There's a lot of comp courses pretty easy to break down doesn't mean it's easy to pick players but uh no surprises for what we see here if we go to the very top of the pricing i think that there's an issue with the very top of the pricing this week so the above 10k guys thomas kepka finau burger and harris english harris english is 10-1 justin thomas is 11-4 in my mind and maybe i'm just i have a complete misread on this for this type of course in particular Justin Thomas should be like $14,000. So we get into the situation a lot with these middling swing season events. There's a hard cap, it seems like, on the pricing. And then what happens is other people have to fill in. Uh, like Justin Thomas, the difference between him and salary and these other guys should be thousands of dollars. But they can't do that because someone has to fill in the next range. So I'm 100% with you. This is what happens, and this is why we get guys that are like forty percent owned up top. But I don't, th- just- I, I don't think that he's gonna be forty percent really? owned though. No, because everyone wants to play fucking Harris English. Okay, well, I, 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 we've done enough shows. I think you know that I don't, I don't believe that's a thing. I can't believe that's a thing. Uh, how, if so, where do you think? I, I'm thinking JT pushes like thirty five percent easy. I. I think it depends on if you can build Justin Thomas teams with one of these other guys. And you can with do that. English? If, yeah, with it, I think that just the majority of lineups will be Thomas and English. And it's nothing to take away from Harris English, who's been playing great. I, I think it was either Kenny or Tambo who pointed out that he's basically become Webb Simpson V2. Like when Webb had his resurgence, this is kind of what he ended up doing. And then he broke through and ended up becoming like a really top player. Now, Harris English didn't have a major to his credit, like Webb Simpson already had. But I could see him being a version of that. Maybe I'm dead dead wrong on this. I'm looking at the ownership projections right now. It does have Justin Thomas at the top. Uh, apparently, everyone's all over Abe Answer as well. Like I, If you're going to put... I mean, Finau is a weird circumstance, but for again, for this type of like short type course where it's, you know, driving doesn't really matter. It's all about wedges and putting. Like, give me Daniel Berger over most of these guys. Yeah, Berger, uh, he's interesting. He fits the course better than the rest, but he hasn't... You know, and it's been a small little sample here. He wasn't in the Masters, but he kind of cooled off uh, ball striking wise in the last couple of events. He can get hot with the putter. JT is far and away the most obvious play. The ownership is going to be there. I think the bigger question is what you were talking about. Do you double up north of 10K? Do you just do a pretty standard build with JT and someone in the nines? That's going to really determine how you, how the rest of your lineup goes. So the ownership of the 10Ks, like I said, it's going to be Thomas. English, Berger, Finau, then Brooks. Brooks is looking like he's coming in single digits. I, I did the article up for Golf Digest, and I picked Brooks as, like, my odds fade of the week, like 10 to 1 for Brooks in this event. Like, it, it makes sense because he's Brooks, but at the same time, like, you don't really ever want to bet Brooks in this type of event, so it's really hard to kind of wrap your mind around, especially if, if Justin Thomas is 7 to 1. I just think that's a better bet. But do you have any interest in Brooks? Because I, I don't. Not really. I mean... 
if you want to tell me you want to, you want to be different up top and you're going to leverage or you've leveraged there and you want some obvious guys as it worked down, I get it, but no, not really for me. Uh, JT far and away, my favorite play English. I get it. He's playing phenomenal. I just, it's funny. I, I think I agree with this Webb Simpson version too, because I didn't see it with when Webb was killing me and now Harris English has been killing me. I'm not super interested in that. I do like Abe answer like most. Uh, I like the 9K range more than the 10K range this week. Yeah, you don't worry that, you know, this being in Mexico, and it's not the WGC Mexico, obviously, that, you know, you're, you're playing for your home country. It's going to be a bit more difficult. Pressure. Got that home home country narrative. No, I don't worry about that. He's just playing well. I Off the tee, of course, is strong, and you don't need it here, but this is just a guy that is – pumping out a lot of quality finishes and it doesn't have to be him the almost honestly the entire nines for me uh i could say some positive things about each of them i'm gonna try to get a couple of those guys on a lot of lineups it's funny because i don't have a single player from the nines started right now Ooh, okay even Corey connors even Corey connors yeah see like who's number one in my model by the way <laughs> okay well that that makes me feel a little better because i really like him he's just I was super impressed at the Masters, followed it up at RSM, really just gaining across the board. The putter is never going to be strong, but it certainly hasn't been a liability. Uh, and then a guy like Neiman, who all his momentum got killed when he got COVID. It's been a little, you know, middle of the road at RSM. But I, again, I just think he's just a good player, can score. I don't mind the course for him. So I'm going to load up on these type of guys. Uh, and go from there. I was looking more at Zalatoris over everyone else. This feels yeah. like his type of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I still don't know a lot about this guy, but from what we've seen, I don't know if it's because it was weak fields, but Corrales, Bermuda, um, these are some of the starts where he's looked good and I mean, he's just a good player. So I, I don't mind it. I, I have the other two ahead of him. You got Ricky in there uh, who has shown nothing, but. Well, well Ricky is, is the, Ricky is the one coming with like by far the lowest ownership. I know. And that is enticing in some aspects. I do think that the risk, uh, you know, with Ricky, obviously, that he's shown no form whatsoever. He needs to get back to putting like a world class player if he's going to contend. And then Henley's been the best player with the Irons on tour, basically. So uh, you have options in here. It's just because I want, like, I'm probably only going to play five lineups this week. And Justin Thomas is likely to be in every single one of them. That this 9K range is becoming a casualty because I do, I don't love this weirdly throughout the course of the swing season and it's been in the results that, you know, a 6K guy has almost won every single week at the non-majors and the non-WGC-style, like WGC style, like Zozos that have gone. And even in those, like, Kokrak won one of them, and I guess Cantley won the other. So there you had a 6K guy in there. But I just don't like the 6K range this week. It's not nearly as strong as it was, but I do think there's some guy. I got some sickos down there. Um, yeah, and I mean, Kokrak, he should be in the 6K range, so we can add him to the streaks. It. I, I don't know when I, I mean, I haven't built just yet, but when I'm clicking in JT, I, I feel fine even doubling up on some lineups with two guys in the nines and then three guys hovering around seven K. The issue for me is I like, I don't even really like that many guys in the eights. It's the like upper sevens, which I really like. So if I do that, I can go like hmm. double 10 K triple high sevens and then someone in the low sevens and just make my rosters that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if this is an actual term. I say this all the time, though. I always call that, like, hybrid balanced because uh, it looks aggressive, but it's really not. And if – I mean, I know we're jumping around, and I, there's probably a better time to ask this, but, like, are you are you talking about Norin there or other people? Other people. Okay, okay. That makes well, sense. How much is Norin? Norin is 7,900. No, I, like, just below him. Like, the range of Adam Long, Keegan Bradley, Russell Knox, okay. and I, I love Shez Revy this week. Okay, that makes – because Nor Norin is someone I, I really struggle with each and every week. And this course, I see some things for him, but I don't know what to do. I, I'm kind of confused about the player that Norin is at this point. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like, in my mind, also. he is get him at the hardest course possible. And, like, he can make shots there. He can grind it out. Almost like how he used to, how he used to feel about Brennan Grace. Although Brennan Grace ended up winning at Heritage in a more difficult year, obviously. I think he was one of two guys double digits under par. But that's always how I thought about Norin. Like he's going to be a chaser on Sunday. Like he's he's in his best spot if he's like four back, and then all of a sudden, like Sunday conditions are horrid. He can go make a charge where everyone else falters. That's just the impression that I have of him in my mind. But he's just not that player anymore. No, I mean he was doing that in Europe like several times. He would post 
like with like a 62 on Sunday and then just win the tournament. But um, to me, it's interesting. You, you don't like the nines. I don't really like the eights. That That's the range that I'm not coming up with much. I have one guy, obviously, that I really like. But other than that, there's not a ton. I got two. Two I really like. Obviously, your guy, Grio. I'm going to play him this yep. week. I'm going, I have Leishman projected for 3% ownership. I, I th- seemed like he was fine at the Masters. And if that's bet, the case, this is way too cheap for him in this field. <laughs> I bet Leishman, 55 to 1. Yeah, but you bet that in like January. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, Leishman early. Oh, no, no. Week. Oh, bet Leishman for this tournament. Yeah. Yeah, I bet him at 60, I, I bet him at 60 to 1 uh, right, right when the odds first came out as well. Anything above 40, I think, is a good number for him. But you, also bet, you yeah. also bet him at the Masters. That we don't. <laughs> talk about that part um but yeah that that i will say uh you know he finally flashed something now maybe that was just noise maybe it's an outlier but he did look good at augusta so if we think he's found there's a couple guys in this field that i'm going to mention leishman is one of them if you think that they have found form long term they are wildly underpriced and with no ownership there at 87 i get it i like i said i bet him in the outright what about Harmon? uh he finally breaks the miscut streak I'm not overly worried about that. Uh, RSM's a brutal cut to make anyway. Do you go right back to him at 84? I was never on it to begin with, so okay. I have no problems not being on it. Um, I would rather, uh, man, I would rather play Grio. Uh, do you think people are off Munoz now? Yeah, he's the other one. Like, just fantastic, dominant, impressive at the Masters. One miscut at RSM. Awful putting, and everyone just gives up on the guy. Uh I like Grio more. I like Harmon more, but I, I could still say it. One thing, and just because the Masters was at such a weird time, and you usually see this like coming out of the Masters in April for like Heritage and Valero and those types of things. The the random like mid carters, the intercontinental champion contenders at the Masters, like the Munoz, uh, I guess even Leishman at this point too, but he just he's a bit of a different circumstance. But like a lot of the first timers, like the Corey Connors of the world, I know it was his second time. But when you see them just after, and I guess Connors came out of this R8, that their game they're really trying to tailor to peak for the masters. Then sometimes they just don't have much left in the gas tank after that, especially like now at the end of the year, it's like, what is this? So there was a, I made a list actually uh, of guys. CT pan was on it. Munoz Connors, all those guys who went to RSM off. I don't say like career defining finishes, but some big time finishes at Augusta. I was really concerned with the majority of them. Uh, I, that's why I was super impressed with Corey Connors. He followed it up with another top 10. I thought that spoke a lot, but I wasn't surprised to see Munoz. Yeah, it's it's tough to continue to get up for these tournaments after something like that. And getting yourself back in for the next year. Horschel is another one that has no ownership. 8th, 21st, the Go past on. two years of this course. Looking at his stats is embarrassing. He hasn't missed a cut since the Northern Trust. And the week before that, he was actually second at the window. But he hasn't gained strokes on approach since the BMW when he came 33rd. Yet he keeps making the cut every week. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really understand. He's a guy that I, I, I struggle with. You mentioned the ball striking has not been good, but he is finding weekends. He's a little overpriced. I, I think I'll try to find the two or $300 to Connors and Neiman, but... Uh, you know, low owned Billy Ho. We know he can get crazy out with the putter. We've seen it time and time again. And I'm trying to think of where he has his wins or like where his best, I guess he won the Byron Nelson at that shorter course back in the day over Jason Day in the playoff. But like Wyndham, I would say that Wyndham is probably, I wouldn't say it's like a direct correlation course, but I think it's probably pretty telling that heritage PGA national uh, all into one little bucket. And then you have the Sony open along with it. Like those seem to be the courses where he plays the best. Yeah, he's got some splits there. I mean, he's he's more of a Bermuda guy, but I I don't mind it. I just worry about exactly where his game is at. Yeah. Just, I'm just I'm still just hung up on Leishman. I wish I knew how he did it at the Masters. Like maybe I can yeah. go back, back through the app and try to figure it out, but you know, I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, you're you're going to have to blind you're going to have some blind faith there because he could go right back to just being he's been terrible for months. Or he found something, he turned a corner, and then 8,700 unowned Mark Leishman is a big tournament play for sure. Do you worry that a 18% Grio is just too popular? Um, I mean, it's never I- ideal, but he's just, A, it's May and Grio, so that you got to take that into account. But he's just playing so consistent. Even when he doesn't putt, he gives you a 25th, a 33rd. And that, not that that's 
fantastic, but you know what? Uh, with six to six being so low week after week, you, you kind of want a couple guys like that. So I'll leverage elsewhere. I have a couple insane plays down low, and I'll I'll be fine even if I start with like JT and Grio. JT and Grio, you probably wouldn't even have to go all that low. Oh well, I'll have probably like Ricky in between them somehow, like I always do. Just use Leishman instead. Make Leishman your new Ricky. I I play Leishman a lot. It's just it's not as tilting well we, speaking of tilting will we get shot tracker no okay oh, i mean that's we've, easier to play we, these guys we've never had it yeah we've never had it at this event before so i'm guessing that we don't have it yeah okay it could, well. could be worse there was a european tour event where i bet on a guy who was in like second place it was almost like what, what was it the corrales that did that as well or like jonathan bird was the first round leader then they updated the scoreboard he's like oh he, he is nowhere near first round leader Oh, yeah. Yeah, they tweeted out him and Chris Kirk uh, strokes gained shot tracker. Just losing a quick five strokes there at the end. That has, so, yeah, that's that's in play this week for this tournament. Uh, just looking at the ownership and guys we glossed over, like Russell Henley actually seems like a really good price at $9,300. That's fooling no one as he might. He and Justin Thomas and Harris English might be the three highest owned guys now. Yeah, and listen, I get it with Henley. The, the problem I have with him is – I have four guys right next to him that I also like. So if I'm going to take a discount in ownership, I'll pivot, roll the dice there. It's just the pivots all around him. Like besides Ricky, if you go into the eights, that's where everyone is not going. So you have Carlos Ortiz. He'll be double digits. Grio will be double digits. Damon will be double digits. And everyone else will be in the singles. Like, And you have Woodland there as well. Like I would much prefer to play Leishman over Woodland, but I can see people talking themselves into Woodland. Yeah, I mean, I... Woodland is someone I looked at. I just, I, I, we've been saying that he may be hurt. He's nursing he, that injury. He is, he is hurt. I don't know why he's even playing here. He's like, been, why not just rest? He was fifth, Chill out, man. fifth at workday, 22nd at Memorial, and has not been good since. Yeah, I would rather, I, I'm not saying I want to do this, but I would rather just like blindly play Pat and Kazire if I had to. <laughs> Do you have any interest in Carlos Ortiz? It feels like he kind of, you know, hit his peak. Yeah, I'm not going to chase that. I firmly would rather play Newman or Corey Connors. I, I would rather even go below. Like, instead of playing Ortiz, like Leishman, Horschel, I, I'd gamble on Todd, who's looked like garbage, but he did win this last year. Yeah, I mean, this is a good course for him. There's no doubt. He's another one I I just don't know. He's putting really well, and it's just not even doing anything because his ball striking is really regressed in a hurry here. Likely why I probably will not play him, because I want to play those four guys, like I said, in the upper sevens. I think that's where my, my bread is buttered this week. Although everyone's on all four of those guys, which I don't love. No one's on your guy, Norrin, though. He is $7,900. In, in like, somehow, Piercy is like six times the ownership. The, that's, the, that's the one thing I do like about this week is, at most of besides JT, at most of the spots where there's significant ownership, there are a couple pivots that I have really close to the guy. Uh, Piercy is a good play. I like him, but Norin to me is not that much worse. You've got long HV3. You mentioned Chaz, Keegan, the, all these guys, there's merit to using them. Um, and even as you work down a couple more guys, I, I think there are names that we have to consider. I could lose Adam Long from my list, I think, but I, I really do like the other guys. Like, I, you know, nothing goes wrong with Chalk, Keegan, Bradley. We all know that. Never. He's been playing I like really Keegan well. too. He's been playing really well. I bet him to win. <laughs> he, I mean, Tita Green is just a clinic, and he hasn't putted at all. So even if you get mild improvement on the greens, that's going to probably up the finishing position if the ball striking continues. Oh, man. Benny Ahn is really not playing well, is he? No, because he was a first look. When I saw his odds, and his odds were like 125 to 1, I was like, in this field, really? Ben Ahn is good, but apparently he's not. Yeah, I don't know what... What is going on with him? Obviously, we can't see what happened at the Masters. I know the putting is never good, but the the driving has has regressed a little bit. And although here you can really club down, obviously, I'm not sure what we get. If he's very low owned, though, I'll probably look to him and Straka, as I all often do. Straka bailed me out. I somehow had a bunch of six of sixes at the RSM and won way less than I should have. It was bad. Mm. That's so frustrating. C considering, like, in single entries, I was, like, one of three teams that would have a six of six and, like, barely came inside the top ten. Yeah, I don't think I, – I again, it feels like this was, like, three years ago, but 
I don't think I had a six to six at RSM. It was um, it was less I, like in the big one. It was less than one percent of team like lineups yeah, had six of no, six. I don't think I had one. It but was, like Straka, I had like Straka and Neiman and Lowry, and they like they just couldn't get it going. Straka just kept giving everything back. His yeah, his. I mean, obviously we only see three rounds, but. His stats from RSM were not good. He had the rare four strokes lost off the tee, five strokes lost with the putter. It's amazing he even made the cut. Well, he made the cut. I think he birdied like six of eight holes on Friday to end up getting through to the weekend. But the encouraging thing about him is he gained almost four strokes on approach, was good around the greens. And if you just go look at his splits on the greens, like 5.4 strokes lost putting in over three rounds is, is that the worst putting performance of his career? No, Travelers in 2019, 5.9 lost, and that was in two rounds. Made the cut of the Canadian Open in 2019, lost 5.7, and then at RSM lost 5.4. That's only over three rounds. Generally, like, he's not bad on the greens. The thing I like about Straka is there's a there's a handful of players on tour that I classify like this. He often loses, not often, but he has polarizing putting splits where some guys are, they gain a stroke, they lose a stroke. He could lose five or six strokes, but he also could gain five or six strokes. He's had several events, even Houston. Uh, he gained 6.2 strokes with the putting. So you're upping the volatility with the putter. You're not just getting a guy that eh, he's going to be around zero, which is good for safety, but bad for upside. Yeah, he has more events gaining more than five strokes putting in an event than he does in losing five strokes putting in an event. Yeah. So. so the tails are aggressive there. And the irons are really good. And I don't think the driving really matters all that much here. Well, no, when you see some of the guys I'm recommending as we work down, I, I hope it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I'm going to throw Straka into the pool, leave out Ben and see how that goes. Um, how popular does Gim get? I think he has a chance to be the third or fourth most popular guy. I have him right now at 13%. Which is not slightly, uh, which is slightly more than like Streelman, Denny McCarthy, and Peter Malnati. I would take the over on that, but may maybe people are still not. I don't want to say that they don't know who he is because he has been playing, but he's he's in a range where maybe you don't get as aggressive. I, he's just the consistency is starting to get there. I feel like people who have been playing him are going to continue to play him, and the price hasn't increased. I was looking at Von Taylor, who actually came 30th at RSM, and like he had a disastrous run like post-COVID. He's actually made two of his past three cuts all of a sudden. Good ball striking at RSM over his three rounds. It's like Optimizers and models love Von Taylor. I'm not entirely sure why, but they do. And it was they just really like, it's it just like if you I, I haven't looked at projections yet, but just knowing how projections work, I would bet you that somehow Harris English outranks Justin Thomas this week. I hope so. I really do. Um, I, listen, I, I, it's not to say again, some of these guys are playing good and they, they fit these courses. I just, I don't, I don't go about it like that for better or worse. Obviously that could be some sort of a leak in, in how I approach things, but I think that Doug Gim will be more popular than maybe we're expecting. Uh, but, but does there's that, some reasonable but, pivots right there, too. But does, but does that make Gim a bad play? Because I still think that $7,400 is too cheap for him. He's been really good. Not at all. I, I think that sometimes people get confused. Just because a guy's popular, it just means that, A, if you want to play them, you need to do something different with your five other spots, and, B, uh, you're, weighing, you're weighing it against the pivots at different ownerships, and it can you have to be pretty convinced if the guy's going to get to astronomically high ownership because golf is high variance and there's a cut. So Charlie Hoffman is right there. I think that's a great tournament play, but Gim is still far and away safer for me. What about my guy, Johnny Question Marks? John, uh -huh. I don't think I've ever got. I don't know. I'm not going to say it. That I've never got him right. I don't know if I've actually ever played him. He's been like sneaky good. He has. You play that guy. I mean, he has made like. Eight out of ten cuts, and he's twelfth at RSM. What does he do good? Is he like a, a putting guy, or or just like eh? I think he does kind of every. Like he hits a lot of fairways. Like he's not long off the tee at all, so he can. Get, I think he won this. I'm in my mind. I feel like he's won this tournament before. Although nothing I can find in research will actually pop that up. He's won on tour. Yeah, he guy. he he has a win. I think it was this tournament back when it was like a crossover event. Like 2012, 2013, something he won like that. The QB shootout, probably. Let's see. Best position on tour. Yeah, he won the Mayakoba Golf Classic in 2012. 
2012. Ooh. All yeah, right. I, I think it was in March, and it was a crossover to like the WGC at Doral at that time. Hmm. Well, he's almost coming up on his 10 year anniversary here. Maybe he'll uh, lock it down again. I, I mean, again. I also I to... I also don't even know if it was played at the same course. That's debatable. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, actually, it does say it was played at El Chameleon. So there we are. Okay. So he's familiar. He's done it here before. You're going to get him at a fraction of the ownership of Doug Gim. That's a fact. Uh, so there are guys. Aaron Wise is right there. Yeah, of um, course. Your, your daily mention. Daily mention. Got to get that quota. Do you like Charlie Hoffman at all, though? Not really, no. Uh, that makes me sad. He's starting to play a little better. I feel like he was playing better, and then it kind of reverted back to the way that he was playing before he was playing better. Yeah, but now he's starting to do it again. So unless it reverts... Uh, again, but he's, you know, 29th at Houston, 23rd at RSM. When you get him right, you tend to actually get paid off in terms of finishing points. Good score. I like the course for him. Uh, now, the course history is one of the more bizarre things I've ever seen. Not that I really care about that, but have you seen his course history here? I, I didn't look into it. Has he never made a cut? No, he he won here in 2014, and then he's missed six straight. Good. Cuts. So he just goes and parties. Yeah, I don't know. Again, it's Charlie Hoffman, but I, if you want to leverage off Gim, you can do it with several guys. I'm going to have plenty of Doug Gim in my lineup, so he's a, he's a very solid play in my mind. So after Gim and uh, at 74 and 74, the last guy I have starred on my list is actually Bryce Garnett at 7000 bucks. Bryce Garnett. I played him at RSM, and it didn't work. Um Corrales, OH, oh, wow, man, he must love this course. Yeah, he lo- he loves this course. He loves, like, any time that you get out of North America and into Central America or the Caribbean, he's it's like Bryce Garnett time. <laughs> man, yeah, stroke gain jungle. Um, uh, there are other guys in that range, not that I love, but I, I have different flyers. I will say that he has, just looking at, he clearly has a type of course that he excels at, and it is this, so... Um, so the other guy you, you mentioned Leishman Kyle Stanley from nowhere oh no played well at RSM basically like Leishman just there was no form whatsoever and then he randomly popped do you take anything from that he gained eight strokes on the approach I mean isn't that the is that the most no that's the third most he's ever gained in his career in a single event that was only over three rounds so he probably actually gained more than that I don't know. I don't feel like I want to chase Kyle Stanley's best tournament ever with his irons. It's a fair point. Another bad, bad, bad course history. What about Camille? Um, who? Camille Vajegas. Oh yeah. I mean, he he was like the flat min. Um, he was showed up. He was he was my only guy in those six of six lineups who was doing anything. Yeah, he was putting. You know, I, I don't you, love that. You know, you you get the price bump, you get the ownership bump. But again, in this range, I don't think you need to be too cognizant of that. None of these guys are going to be overly popular. I do. Yeah, I I was actually going to check. Are there any 6K guys that project in double digits? No. Wes Bryan is the closest, which this does actually make a lot of sense for Wes Bryan. I like Wes Bryan. Um, Listen, at Bermuda, he was massive chalk, let everybody down. He is a course type, though. Uh, Winner at Heritage can lean on the irons and the putting here. And then I will throw out again. These are, this is aggressive one percenter type. I think that JJ spawn is in play as well. I used him at RSM. Like you want to talk about following shot tracker and tilting your fucking face off. Just you be glad that there's no shot tracker with JJ spawn. Cause like that's it's just a 10 feet miss eight feet, miss two feet, miss make f- chip in from 33 feet out of <laughs> bounds. It's like, Oh my God, what's going on yeah, all, here? <laughs> all on the same hole. It's, I don't – Jay Spawn is a, a really tough guy to break down for me, but at the same time, I feel really confident in this of what type of course. He's another guy like Bryce Garnett. I know where he, in theory, could play well. It doesn't mean he's going to, but his finishes, best finishes on tour. He was runner-up at RSM, third here. Then he's got a sixth at Heritage, and he's got some other – yeah, 14th here You know, as we work down. There's some other littered in there, but I, I do think that J.J. Spawn on a track like this – could be really sneaky. I mean, you don't. I just used him. You don't need to 
talk me back into JJ Spawn. I, I can get on board with that. Is there anyone else from down here? I was just like, I ran like a very short term version of the stat modeling on Fantasy Nationals so for the past 12 rounds. Wes Bryan's actually the best of all the players in the 6Ks at 6,600. He's ninth overall. Austin Cook and Malnati are actually 11 and 12 at 7,300. The next closest 6K guy is Johnny Vegas at 6,700 bucks and then Spawn. Hey, John boy. Uh, I, I, Johnny Vegas, I've tried. I just worry that his, like, what can he do besides be good off the tee, which doesn't actually help? Since the Travelers, which I think was in June, he doesn't have a finish better than 44th. Yeah, that's not. What about, and I, I hate chasing guys like this because I don't know much about him, and I didn't even know that he was playing well until I, I broke down the field. Do you have any interest slash, do you know anything about Roger Sloan besides that he's Canadian? He's Canadian. That I got, I nailed that down as well. But other than that, I don't know anything about this guy. Well, when you watch Canadian Sports Center and you look at the leaderboard, that when they show the notable section of guys that aren't on the leaderboard, he's usually at least featured for the first two days. Lately, he's been featured for the the four days. Uh, three straight made cuts, 16th at Bermuda, 23rd at RSM. Ball striking is good. You off to tease a little weak, but again, you can forgive that here. Uh, you know, runner up at Puerto Rico. Eh. This reminds uh, this reminds me who was the guy too? I was either last year or two years ago. It was like Anders Albertson. Remember that guy? And his T to green oh, was I like, that and the guy, the guy's T to green in one of the events was so off the charts. It just kept him popping for like six straight weeks. That guy, he made like five or six cuts in a row. I played him at waste management in, in very high dollar. And since then, I don't know if he ever made a tour after I played him. And now he's, I think, on the outlaw tour or something. <laughs> it, it's been a tough scene for, for Anders Albertson. I can get behind Sloan, I guess. Like, I, I, re- I actually don't know much about him, like what, he's a, what he does. Neither well. like, do I. I just... Like looking at his stats, like they're slightly above average everywhere. Over the past twelve rounds, and he's, he's made been three playing cuts in a row. little better. Yeah, um, I just I don't know. There are names, you know. Tyler Duncan is down here. List is down, but like just some guys, they're just not in form. I I think you don't need to dip down here. Cameron Percy, your boy, sixty four. First round leader, Cameron Percy, always. Always okay. He's just a first. He's a first round savant. Him and Scott Harrington. Who that? By the way, you see some of these names down here? No, I didn't even really look at the very bottom. Uh, Armando, this guy's name is cut off. Uh, Armando Favela, Aaron yeah. Tazares, Michael Kim. Oh, Campos is playing. Santiago Tarrio. Your boy, Chase Seifert, is sixty one hundred bucks. If, there's if, there's there's actually a grouping of guys at sixty one hundred dollars who I like do play. You got Mark Anderson, yeah. Chris Baker, the birdie maker. And Chase Seifert. The, you could the, the bigger problem I have with these guys is I don't know how, what type of lineup construction where I actually need someone down here. Yes. But their names Satoshi is down here. Oh, my poor Kadira. Yeah, it was. I bet him at RSM. Sad. Quad Cummings. I mean, if you play okay. him, you're going to be Rob Goings. <laughs> I see what you did there. I, there's just. Again, I don't know. You know what my only goal this week is, is to not play Troy Merritt. Um, it it yeah. is. I mean, this isn't an alternate event, so you can't play Troy Merritt. That would be useful. I don't. Every week I look through my lineups and I have a team and I'm just like, oh, wow. Oh, five of six. What happened here? Oh, Troy Merritt plus eight. Like, why did he go into the pool? And the um, times that you don't play him, he comes in second. Yeah. And I don't know he's in the field till Saturday. And it's just like, oh, wow. Troy Merritt has multiple streaks in the same day even though that's not allowed um he, you, he gets other, he gets of, he gets extra credit for it yeah they just give him all like i said bonuses that i didn't even know existed do you do you know I, not much about him I, I know he's a georgia tech kid just turned pro good at the masters do you have any interest in ogle trey i feel like i should he, he looks talented. like he, he looks like kenneth from 30 rock never seen it yeah, well, you should be. There's something for you to do. You can go watch Thirty Rock at least like the first few seasons. Tina Fey, Tina Fey, Eric Baradwin, and Andy Ogletree. Okay, I'll uh, 
I'll put it on the list. Oh, Zing Zhu Zhang, he's here. Steel. How is Steel? Like, poor Steel, 6,700 bucks. I want to look more into Burgoon had a good RSM until the final day. Bronson, where is he? He's 6,600. Next to Killa Keith. Yeah. Like, should we be yeah. giving like any merit to Ryan Armour at a course where it's just wedges and putting? <laughs> Probably. I mean, all these guys. I, I do think if I had to to organize my my jumping around here, Wesley Bryan, he's going to be the most obvious, but I also think he's quote unquote the safest. Spawn to me is the most interesting tournament play. Um, and then if you really need someone from the clouds, God. Yeah, I don't even know who I would recommend. Maybe it would be Roger Sloan. Let's see here. I don't know about that. Wedge play 100 to 125. Oh, you might be onto something with Aaron Wise here, by the way. Oh, oh, I'm onto something. Um, he's got secret coastal splits. Does he? He does. He was a runner up at Ber- or third at Bermuda. He's been 10th here, 13th at RSM. He, despite being a guy that obviously he has some abilities off the tee, I think he might be in the Luke List Woodland bucket where he actually benefits from being forced to club down. So if I'm looking at 120, 100 to 125 yards proximity, so like short wedge proximity, which there should be a lot of that this week. Wise, Duffner, Straka, Thomas, Austin Cook. All guys that tend to play well at Heritage do. Yeah, I could get down with that. Could I'm going to have... Well, yeah, I mean, there is a type for this. It's not to say that some people can't crash the party, but I, I do think those types make probably the most sense, honestly. Do you know who number 10 is in that list? Knox. Troy Merritt. Oh, God. See? You see what you've done? No, Knox is actually ninth, so Knox is even better. Oh, well. Camillo? Oh. Well, it's, it's guys you would expect. Connor's really good with his wedges, too. 125 to 150. Got Henley, Wes Bryan, Reavy, Hovland. We didn't even talk about Hovland, by the way. I know. Poor guy. Scary. He's going to win one of these events by, like, 50 strokes. He really is. He's got that just domination gear, and I'm not going to end up getting to him. He's going to get squeezed. And I do worry about that, honestly. Campos? Campos. Maybe I should be playing Campos. Campos. He was the guy that used to always top 10 at the Puerto Rico Open and get himself into the field for Houston. That was, yeah, his, that I, was I, his jam. I vaguely remember that. Um, he, he was 66th here last year in his only start, and he has missed seven cuts in a row. It, and that includes the Corn Ferry Tour. Sorry, Raphael. Um, yeah, that's a no for me, obviously, but... I. Yeah, I think it really comes down to just to kind of sum it up. What do you want to do after you click in JT most likely? If it's if it's JT English and Gim, you got some work to do with those finest final I'm, three I'm going to add your guy Aaron Wise in. Let's go. Let's go. I love it. Aaron Wise, he's never let us down ever. No, um, that, would, that, that, that would be unimaginable that he would have a I bad tournament. Nope, he just always gets it done for me. Aaron Wise. Grio, Aaron Wise. Hey, listen, it's the well, last event of the year. Just play your fucking favorites. P- play the uh, hits. You know, <laughs> I hate to say it, but, you know, I, I, it's not that I'm, like, overly burnt out, but, like, this week I'm just like, you know what? I'm going down with the boys. Uh, <laughs> we're going to end 2020 with Aaron Wise, Grio, Ricky combos in some of these teams. I'm not going to lie. Uh, do you have any bets? Because I have a few. I got a few bets. I played Justin I, Thomas, parlayed with some guy named Bautista on the South African who was 350 to one. So if I, if, if Bautista wins and Justin Thomas wins, you may never see me again. That's, that th- is quality. I, stuff. I think it pay, I think the parlay pays like 300,000 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so are they just like, what are they running back to Joe Berg open? They just, what? They're yeah, still but, all, that but all the good players left to go play it like in Dubai. So it's just, it's just Jocko and whoever you played match play. Uh, um, let's see here. Golf in Dubai in is play. Xander there? Lombard? Not, yeah, not Shoffley, obviously. Yeah, Xander Lombard is 55 to 1. So you got, uh, Newt. Fratelli oh, yeah. are the two favorites. Then it's like Wilco Nienbayer. Oh, Matthias Schwab is playing? Like, uh, there's like guys in this tournament. Brendan Stone. Is my guy in there, Kiefer? Uh, Maximilian, no. He's not playing in this one. Austin Bautista. 
is the guy that I'm riding with here. Yeah, he has wins in five of his six last mini tour starts. He's on fire. <laughs> if he just comes top five, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> is he is he South African? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll look him up. Austin Bow. He's not going to have a Wikipedia. I assume that he is Jose Batista's brother. Maybe Batista from wrestling, his brother? Means he's a real big guy. Okay. Driver Aust- heavy. Austin Batista Golf Channel. Austin but He's Australian. Hello. Okay. So he's Scott Henn, disciple. Um, let's like see it. here. He played on the Corn Ferry Tour in the Wichita Open supporting Wichita's youth. He missed the cut. He played in the Izuzu Queensland Open on the Australian New Zealand Tour. He missed the cut. He went to the Coca-Cola QLD PGA Championship and came 37th. Those were his three, like, pro starts. Well, it, that would be one for the books. If it, it, This guy's going to win, and then JT's not going to win. Well, I, I bet him separately outright, too. So. Okay, that's good. So I'm, I'm, okay, sure. I'm okay if Justin Thomas loses, and then he ends up winning. Just, you know, if, they can both, if they both just come inside the top five with my each-way parlay, that should be good enough. But uh, Guys, I've actually bet. I bet Leishman. At Same. sixty to one, I also let me click my bets here. There are no bets to display. Well, that's not good. Oh no, it's I can't cash them out. Yeah, Austin Batista. There we go. Austin Batista three fifty to one parlayed with Justin Thomas plus six fifty, and then Austin <laughs> Batista first round or Austin Batista win in top five parlayed with Justin Thomas first round leader and one for. I think if you're gonna bet Justin Thomas this week, bet him first round leader. Instead of betting the plus 650, bet the plus 1400. I don't mind that. Bet them wire to wire. I, I didn't even see those odds come up, but I did bet uh, for this event. Doug Gim, 100 to 1 with the each way. Keegan Bradley, 80 to 1 with the each way. Shez Reevy, 70 to 1 with the each way. And Leishman. Those were my four bets. You want to talk me into someone else? I Well, I bet Leishman. My favorite guy, this is certainly shorter odds. Uh, I bet answer. I got him at 22. <laughs> then I, I did bet wise. I'm not going to lie. He's 100 to 1. Is he? I mean, I can, you can talk me into wise at 100 to 1. Why not, right? Yeah. He's one on tour. He's got coastal splits. I, I don't think that this tournament, if if you survive JT, it is wide open. Uh, I can get he's, behind Straka too, probably. Like, there are some guys in that. Yeah, Strzok is 100 to 1. Oh, jealous? Aaron Wise, 110 to 1. Did I see that? Getting those edges. Getting I'm in. And then I'm I in. Bet. Aaron Wise with the each way. 110 to 1. I'm in. And then I bet a top 10 on Kyle Stanley at 12 to 1. Oh, Kyle Stanley. But that's that's more of a donation. Well, that's the last time we are. get to bet golf. You know who's going to win this tournament and no one will have bet him, which is hilarious? Mm, Fino? Yeah, can, Tony Fino's 20 to 1 in this field. He's been 20 to 1 at like Riviera against real people. Yeah, he's 20 to 1 in the majors. <laughs> and, and people bet him at that number. They will not bet him at the OHL. It's amazing that there's, there are some guys like that. Uh, I mean, even to a lesser extent, honestly, for me, I think Leishman qualifies as that. Um, but. Yeah, Tony, Tony Fina winning this would be ironic and, and somewhat cruel. All right. They'll do oh. it on the Pat Mayo Experience. A year of golf, 2020. Good year for golf, I will say. Great year for golf. I mean, I didn't think – I had my reservations that we would see much golf, but they made it through. And now, honestly, like we got things like the Masters coming up, but not that, you know, not that long. Do you think that out of every sport – post pandemic that golf was the most successful for like where it started for, for where it ended. Like it seems like it gained a lot of viewers. Like it, people are now like betting, like with legalized gambling coming through, people are like betting golf all the time. Now it's been exciting. It's super exciting. I, for me, I would say that the two sports that made the most mark is golf. And even though I'm not a, an MMA guy, I think that they gained a lot of viewers with their islands or whatever they did. Well, the island events for MMA have been really good because no one gets COVID over there. And every, I think every event that they've had in Vegas, they've lost like at least two fights. Yeah, I mean, I see on the bottom of when I'm watching other things like so-and-so drops out uh, or fights canceled, but they've, they've done a pretty good job broadcasting. And I will say like I had never watched or bet 
uh, MMA in my life, and I have tuned in a couple times on in 2020. You, are you tuning into the Dogger Pass podcast well, on Mayo Media that, Network? That's a given. If I do anything with MMA, uh, it's one of the spots that I check out. Well, you're going to have that again this week for UFC Vegas, I don't know, 38 now or something like that. They should come up with better names for this stuff. Yeah, they need better names. I agree with that. Because everything just runs into one another, and then I get confused about which card is which. And then the one guy that everyone wanted to see fight just got his fight canceled, like, next week, which is not great. Not that I watch this stuff, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Unless it's the, the guy who wrestles the Bears who retired, I don't know who you're talking about. No, it's the next guy. He, I believe he guy. is also Dagestani, but he fights out of Sweden. Shimeyev, I think the guy's name is. I've seen... He wins in like I, 10 I, seconds I, every time. Yeah, I was just saying, I think I saw his whole fight because it was it was like 10 seconds long. Um, yeah, I, I know a little about him, I guess, and that's a stretch. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was the breakout star of, of the island because he fought one week and won in like 10 seconds. He's like, yeah, I'll just fight next week too. And then they he ran won, it back. And then yeah. he won in 10 seconds again. <laughs> there you go. And now, and now, and now, everyone just is dodging him and won't fight him. Like they want him to fight like a top ten guy, uh, and no top ten guy will fight him, which is really stupid, by the way. <laughs> they really need to do, like I, I've been at, not that anyone listens to me, but like, what if they did, like in the snow or in the rain, like elements cage? I think now a- we're veering towards like bum fights, like actual homeless people. Hey, have you never seen bum fights? No, it's yeah, it's, it's actual homeless people fighting. OK, well, that's another I, I didn't consider that. I, I was more thinking of the cage, like a frozen cage in the tundra on ice or something. But see, see I could get involved with that. I, I would be see? down to order that pay-per-view. The problem is, like, as I talked to Cody and Paul, like the, the suggestions that people have for MMA are very clearly for people who don't like MMA. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's my suggestions would probably ruin uh, what people enjoy about the sport, but I would watch that. Imagine that. I can't remember if this was real or something that was just proposed, but I feel like it was a real thing in the early 2000s that in Canada, I think on CBC, Matt, you might remember this. Maybe you're too young. I don't know. That they had like a hockey fight tournament. <laughs> like they had like the biggest goons from the NHL and it was like a bracket. <laughs> you had a hockey fight. Tied dome May season. Yeah, I, I had never heard of that in my life. I'd watch that. I don't know what the crossover between MMA and golf is. I would bet it's pretty low. Oh, definitely low. Yeah. yeah what do you got to? What are you, what are you doing for the month of December? Oh, we're staying busy at awesomeo.com. We got football, college football, college basketball, and we're getting ready for the NBA. So not a ton of time off for me, but I, I the college sports, even though they're a mess, they're my favorite sports to bet. So I'll be more focused on the betting side than the DFS side. Take a little break. When, are there bowl games this year? I, yeah, I mean, I guess kind of figuring it out on the go. They're pushing through the playoff, but teams, there are teams that are seasons are done, and then like Ohio State's like three and zero right now. It's it's a big mess. So, are you going to do like a bowl season type show? Very possible. I do a, a show now Saturday mornings, and everyone can check it out. College football betting and DFS, uh, and then hopefully. We get a little March Madness and we can run back. We'll bring on Tim, do a little, little bracket show in the future. That was a lot of fun last year. You know he's just going to pick Duke. That's great, but w- you know what? We're going to work through it because that was my that was the best I've ever done in a bracket. Yeah, uh, I, I, we I, 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 I won all my brackets last year. We had the winner. Yeah, <laughs> we had the winner, and we also liked Texas Tech to come out for a while. It was a, a very solid performance by us. So that means we're going to lose our winner in the first round this year. Most, I mean... Literally, because it'll probably be Virginia, who that happened the year before uh, to me. So it'll probably happen again. I'm just looking at the uh, I have PGA birdies and PGA bogeys in my tweet deck opened right now is like all time columns. Uh, the last thing that pops up under PGA bogeys, JJ Spawn bogey hole 16. If evergreen content, um, you know what? We're going to we're going to write that ship this Thursday. No doubt about it. All right, let's do it. Thank let's you do it. for being on this season. I, we're going to do our golf draft again, right? It was fun. Oh, we got apparently I forgot about that. And then I got a message from Rick being like, hey, you won. Um, and we all had to donate to your charity of choice. That's true. Yeah. Got got some for the charity. That was fun. Uh, we're definitely going to run that back. Maybe we can get more people involved because of my yeah, And this time we'll be prepared. Rick, Rick swindled us. He he had charted it all out. I, we didn't even know the rules. Um, he was super sharp. He had all the guys who were in the uh, tour championship pegged. Yes. 
Uh, although the, I, I don't think that counted towards anything. Well, no, COVID derailed it all, but uh, um, it was a good strategy at heart. So, yeah, we'll try to run that back for this season, too. So we've got plenty of golf content. i got that big announcement coming out. Become a member at FantasyNational.com. Use slash Mayo at the end of that to get yourself the discount. It's the final week of golf. You might as well jump in now if you haven't done it before to get yourself ready for the 2021 season. I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!